Hello friends, last week in my video, I said the bulls will have to provide a whole lot more support to the markets if the markets were to rise. I backed it up with my article in uh, uh, Live Mint with statistical data about why the bulls were still on the back foot and the only saving grace could have been that the mutual fund industry comes to prop up the markets in the month of March. Well, the first two trading sessions of the week did see the markets attempt to go up, but come Thursday and the markets really turned nervous with Friday being a day when, when uh, uh, the US uh, news of uh, banking defaults, etc. started dragging markets lower. In this week, I want to talk about whether banking can really unravel the sentiments in stock markets in India. To proceed further, do pay special attention to the bond market segment, even though you think bonds are boring, but the key to the market sentiments forward will actually come from the debt market because this is an interest rate problem that is hitting the market. So let's dive right in and on your screen right now is the market roundup window, which tells you that the fall was led by banking, not surprisingly, and the broader base Nifty brought up the rear. The US dollar index actually rose 11 basis points and that pressurized commodity prices. Silver fell, though uh, a panic uh, to uh, the banking news in the US uh, saw safe haven buying in gold. The uh, USD INR rose uh, 8 basis points, which means the rupee continued to weaken against the dollar marginally. The Indian 10-year benchmark bond yield rose 1 basis points and the NSE lost marginally in market capitalization. MWPL continued to rise and the overseas markets provided headwinds to the Indian markets. Coming to our own uh, in-house uh, indicators, what you are seeing is the MWPL, which is uh, a good measure of the risk appetite of uh, an average to marshmallow trader. Now, uh, in the second week after expiry, we are at 28.13% on MWPL, whereas uh, in the previous months, we have been significantly higher in the second uh, uh, week. You can see last month itself, we were at 30.65%. So that is one minor red flag because retail risk appetite is clearly lower. Proceeding to the turnover, what you are seeing is that the index turnover actually rose on a week on week basis in spite of the fact that the previous week was short by one trading session due to a holiday on account of Holi. Stock futures turnover fell very marginally, but still proportionately compared to the fact that we had only four trading sessions, I think it would have actually risen in percentage terms. So uh, uh, the sell off in the markets was actually well participated, which tells you that the markets might be well oiled on the downside. That is um, another minor red flag. Coming to the advanced decline ratio, it eased back below one after a spurt in the week prior to 1.49. Now being back below one tells you that one marshmallow traders are again on the back foot. They are lacking the conviction to buy on an intraday basis. And unless this ratio stays above one with rising prices, I think the bulls are on the ropes, they are on the defensive and after the price, if there's any leading indicator of the trends and sentiments, it is the advanced decline ratio. So this is a leading indicator and it's currently pointing out towards mild weakness. Another small red flag. Now coming to the futures basis. Basis is a premium or discount uh, uh, prevalent in the futures compared to cash. Basis across both uh, the indices has compressed and the decline in the basis is more pronounced in percentage terms in the Nifty 50. What we are seeing is that the basis is still remaining positive. That means the futures are still at a premium to spot. 
I would request you to stay alert because if the basis inverts, which means the futures start trading at a discount to cash, that would be a major red flag. Right now, so far so good, but let's be careful out there. Coming to the impetus, our uh, in-house uh, 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 exclusive indicator you won't find anywhere on the internet. You've trusted this for more than a year now. So the impetus is telling you that uh, the bank nifty led the fall last week with rising impetus. That's a sign of concern because it tells me that there was a great deal of force in the sell off in the bank nifty last week, whereas the nifty fell but on falling impetus. Relatively speaking, the force on the nifty sell off was lesser than the bank nifty sell off. So banks are very clearly turning out to be the gray area in the market. This is a minor red flag for banking. Now for our second exclusive in-house indicator that you won't find anywhere on the internet, the LWTD. Nifty percentage gain loss line has declined, but the LWTD has risen. Does it mean that the market is going to rise? No, it does not. It merely means that at lower levels, there will be short covering, which will come to cushion the declines. Means the bears will try to book profits on their profitable short positions rather than bulls resort to fresh buying. So that will slow down the selling, but it need not necessarily result in a rally. This is another minor red flag for the bulls. Friends, I now come to the bond market, which is at the crux of why the markets fell last week. You see, on my free Telegram channel, which I urge you to subscribe to, it's completely free. I share my views about what we should be doing in the markets as a proprietary trader. I've been telling you that the cost of funds will rise and as cost of funds rise, there are problems about repayment schedules by retail borrowers. So there are delinquencies. It's a very polite word for defaults and delays. So delinquency rates on EMI repayments and loan repayments tend to rise. And that worries all the interest rate sensitive stocks. Banks, NBFCs, consumer finance companies and companies that are dependent on EMI based selling for majority of their product push also start to feel the heat. So a lot of people uh, normally discount the fact, hey Vijay, interest rates have only gone up half percent. You think I won't buy a car just because my EMI is going to go up by half percent. Brave thoughts, but then take the cumulative effect. Interest rates have gone up multiple times. So your EMI has become more and more expensive with every rate hike, which is what is impacting sentiments. Now, after COVID, a lot of countries started printing unbacked currency and pumping that cash into financial markets to boost up sentiments. And this unbacked currency resulted in inflation. Now, to curb that inflation, you need to raise interest rates, which means money is going to become more expensive. Now, during COVID, when the factories were shut, the only reason why the stock prices was rising of these shut factories was that money had to be invested and cheap money was available abundantly. So the very, very reason why the stock market rallied is being taken away now. Money is getting more expensive and the uh, central bankers are pulling back that liquidity injection that they gave us in 2020 and 2021. Let's be extremely careful. I've been telling you on Telegram, don't listen to the excessive bravado. Be very, very careful about rising cost of funds. It's a very major source of worry for equity markets. I've been trading these markets since 1986 and I, I can tell you with personal experience, don't take cost of funds lightly. On your screen right now is the Indian 10-year benchmark bond yield, which has risen one basis point. Like I uh, mentioned on uh, uh, my previous video, as also multiple times on my Telegram channel, I'm watching the 7.56% very, very keenly. If at all rates start going up from here, you might see banking come under severe amount of pressure 
and banking stocks might just take more selling. Should you start and continue to ladder? Yes, of course, you should ladder. You should start uh, uh, taking in uh, 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 a systematic investment plan in uh, debt, if you want to call it that. As a matter of fact, I would uh, even suggest raising allocation to fixed income at the expense of equities, in spite of the fact that stocks have fallen, because I do expect that stocks might weaken a little more. And 8% is more or less a given now where fixed income is concerned. So it's a good deal you're getting out there. Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the bank nifty, which bore the brunt of selling and it fell 1.86%. As you can see on the daily chart on your screen, it fell on two out of four trading sessions. The price is back below the month long moving average and the moving average itself is headed lower. The 41,840 level that I talked about since the last few weeks is proving to be a very stiff resistance for the bulls to overcome. So unless the bulls take the bank nifty above 41,840 and keep it above that persistently, I'm not buying the bank nifty at all. Coming to the weekly chart, what we are seeing is the price has broken below the 20 five week moving average, which is a proxy for a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. That tells you that the medium term outlook is also getting a little soft. The red candle, the bearish red candle has pierced the body of the previous bullish green candle. And that is called a bearish piercing pattern. If follow up selling emerges in the market, you could see more weakness coming in the week ahead. Friends, in the week before last, this index was number four on the most volatile uh, list that we maintain in-house. It rose up two notches to go to number two. That tells you that the uh, challenge level, the difficulty in trading for the average retail trader has just jumped because higher volatility means bigger whipsaws and more uh, stop losses. So uh, the bank nifty is getting trickier. Last week, I advocated a range between 42,750 on the upside and 39,750 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I expect a range between 41,950 on the upsides and 39,000 on the downsides. I'm not really very sure whether these ranges will hold because the markets are extremely nervous in the undertone. Do continue to trade light and maintain stop losses. Friends, the bank nifty done. I now come to the nifty 50, which fell on two out of four days, exactly like the bank nifty. The daily chart on your screen tells you that the price is below its 20 day moving average and the moving average itself is pointing lower. The red thick trend line, which connected the peaks starting from October 2021 has yet again proved to be a support of some sorts because the low of Friday has not yet violated it. If it is violated, it would come as another bearish confirmation. Here again, I've been talking about the 18,115 levels as a threshold above which the bulls must take the nifty and keep it above that. That's not happening. So I'm not buying the nifty as yet. Take a look at the weekly chart on your screen. The price is very comfortably below its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. And this is the third consecutive week that the nifty has closed below this average. So the medium term outlook is clearly underwater. What you are seeing is a bearish engulfing pattern on the chart where the bearish candles body has completely overshadowed the bull previous bullish candles body. The price is actually logged a bigger candle compared to the previous week. So there was more force in selling in terms of price uh, ranges as compared to the prior week's bullishness. So this is again a confirmation of uh, weakness and another minor red flag. Last week, this uh, index was number nine on our most volatile list. It rose up one notch to go to number eight. 
and that raised the challenge levels for the retail investor marginally, but it's not half as volatile as the bank nifty. Last week, I advocated a range of 18,000 and 75 on the upside and 17,125 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I would expect a range between 17,875 on the upside and 16,900 on the downside. Here again, please trade very, very light and keep your stop losses. Friends, now for the final bit of uh, statistical analysis wherein I analyze the retail uh, risk appetite by way of their footprint and how much of the turnover was contributed by which segment of the market. What you are seeing is a daily chart with a 20 day look back bias of the percentage uh, 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 turnover generated by various segments. So stock options which are higher risk as compared to index options, the turnover was almost the same levels. Stock futures which is indicated by an olive green line. Here again, the turnover is more or less in line with the prior week. Index futures turnover, which is shown as a red line, is marginally higher. Now, as I've explained to you in multiple videos, uh, some of which are in the description and in the pinned comment below, when traders move from uh, stocks to indices, they are typically exhibiting lower risk appetite because in that indexes are less volatile as compared to individual stocks. Let's now see what's happening with the index options. Here the turnover has fallen on Friday, which is normal after expiry and the fall is in line with the previous weeks. So the turnover contributed by the index options is in line with what was happening in the past. So retail risk appetite to sum the substance and uh, uh, the topic here has either been marginally lower because of uh, individual stock futures and options witnessing flat turnover or even lower because index futures have seen higher turnover contribution as compared to other segments. Now I come to what I would do in the week ahead. It's a segment that I have started since the last one month or so. I have told you that I will continue to bet on theta decay on interest rate sensitives. More of this is in our free telegram channel. So please do join in there. I will continue to bet on theta decay on interest rate sensitives, cyclicals and EMI dependent companies. Why change a winning formula as long as it's working? So there's no point in reinventing the wheel. I'm bearish in the commodity space on industrials and energy commodities and I would seek short selling opportunities at select price points. I'm still seeking fat tail risk hedges in the foreign exchange uh, uh, segment in the currency derivative segment on the NSE. Although, to be honest, I have still not initiated any tail risk hedge. I'm still waiting for the opportune time. And as and when the time does come, I will update this on my Telegram channel. Friends, now for the last and most popular segment of this video for the statistically inclined uh, uh, traders, wherein I give you five uh, uh, stocks that have lost the most amount of impetus where you take big exposure, wait for small price moves. This is for scalpers and five stocks which have gained the most amount of impetus on Friday where you take small exposure, wait for large price moves. This list is valid only for Monday. If you need to be updated with this list Tuesday through Friday, please uh, subscribe to our free telegram channel. It's posted there. So the impetus uh, gainers list where you take small exposure, wait for large price moves is led by Mahanagar Gas, followed by Mannapuram Finance, Balrampur Chini, Cummins and Power Finance Corporation. The list of impetus losers for the day is led by, led by JSW Steel, ABFRL, Wipro, Bharat Forge and IRCTC. Friends, before I wind up this video, a reminder to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. In the comment section, please let me know how my video and our Telegram channel is helping you become better traders out there. Also, please help us to reach a wider audience by sharing our video 
with like-minded smart traders and investors like yourselves across your social media groups. I thank you for your patience and being with me in this video. Wish you all the best. Have a very, very profitable week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.